super excited to be here to sh share some adventures I've, I've, I've been doing in drag makeovers using facial models in AI. And they're all using the, um, the facial mo model style again, style again, and Fl Flickr faces high quality data set powers this person does not exist.com which you may, may have seen it's quality um, faces generated from a data set of, of 70,000 people and they're all re re realistic and they're all generated kind of on demand um, the, the, the ecosystem of style again is flexible enough to support drag queen makeovers out of the box and there is a publicly available demo of it. It took a lot of work to do so maybe it's worth thinking about ways to, to make it easier. Style again uses some ideas from style transfer and kind of progressively growing um, networks to separate um, generating backgrounds of images from foregrounds of images. If you're doing faces, you can kind of separate a blurry background from like your eyes and your teeth and whatnot. And you can in smoothly interpolate in the 9,000 dimensional space it works in. All of these faces are somewhere close to the zero face in this 9,000 dimensional space. The code's available. The training data is available from Flickr. There are several pre-trained models available. And if you have a week or so on a, on a machine that costs 25 an hour to run, you, you too can make your own models. Uh, if you want to generate your own um, the training data, it's even more expensive. Um, and the idea is that it comes from 70,000 faces extracted from Flickr. Um, they're all 1024 by 1024. They get aligned and cropped w in various ways uh, with statues and paintings and photos of photos pruned out. Um, so there definitely is a bias in that. Um, but they say it contains considerable variation in terms of age, ethnicity, and image background. There's good coverage of accessories such as eyeglasses, sunglasses, hats, etc. These are seven sample images, but accessories are more than just a pair of glasses. Well, well, the, the idea is that when you're encoding, you, you crop an image to a face, you choose a loss function as we saw in the last talk. You have to gauge where you are with where you want to be. Is it just have your, have your parameters exploded to a prime number close to infinity? Is it the, the just sheer pixel difference? Is it, is it some statistical model? And, and, and once you know how to improve, there are, there are ways to optimize where, where you are. And the zero face that you want to, that a lot of initial models kind of um, hem towards a lot of the the models from this person does not ex exist keep pretty close to the, the z zero face. It, it's possible to get kind of glitch art if you go too far off but you, but you also don't want to stay too close to that. Maybe you want something more exciting. Maybe you want Ezra M Miller's Seven Eyes from the Met Gala in um, 2019, maybe you need uh, Tina M Martinez's um, adversarial poinsettia fascinator with industrial holiday cheer gift b b bows. That didn't register as a face, even though we can all see it is. So, so I so I'd attempted to to compile some some faces of reasonable uh, photography subjects that seemed worth including. Uh, PR is well, well, welcome, and I and I attempted to encode all of those, and I plotted the loss um, over over the time of encoding it compared to encoding that z zero face. Um, there are three selfies I took with 
a um, just like webcam in in my office, just like waking up in the morning, and then there's uh, Billy Porter as the sun god. Um, with with more of a loss, you can see he's resplendent. Uh, so so that's interesting because it, it is um, proportional to how well you conform to the training data, uh, which is great if you feel like going out and being a bit more gender queer. You can take a selfie and see like this is this is too cl close to. Seven, the average of 70,000 people on Flickr. So <laughs> this is a way to just sh sh shift, shift it up a bit if you're in control. If you're not in control, if that runs on a CCTV, this is a bad idea. Uh, but, but, but either way, uh, running it is expensive and, um, and it's tough to model like a sun god look, Bob the drag queen's like blue wig, hoop earrings, and a snarl like a smoking water pistol and whatnot. And there are ways of, of kind of seeing how the, how the end product maps to the beginning and you can see ways that, um, that the encoding progresses over time. And it, 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 it makes more sense if you see it kind of exponentially sped up because it because you need to run it a lot longer than you would expect just to converge to something that resembles to what uh, a human observer would, would consider to be a uh, reasonable encoding. Um, so th th the, the point of this is that there is a lot of ability to do vector space manipulations. The original Stelgen encoder I used had three dimensions. One was age. You add age, and it becomes younger. You add gender, and it becomes more b -b -b butch. And you add smile, and no one really needs to have a computer to tell their selfie to smile. And all of those are straightforward enough, but why not, why not um, try a dimension of a performer into and out of a costume? So why not do a drag makeup? tutorial. Furthermore, if you have computationally defined what a, uh, what a makeover is, you can say, how do I look out of the drag I've got on? So you can go in the negative dim dimension, which is not exactly intuitive, but th that's how that goes. So here I am doing a Trixie Mattel look, um, going into and out of drag. I've got like a C-3PO zinc robot <laughs> fantasy knockoff, and either way, I've got kind of a Chernobyl like skincare routine <laughs> when I'm going out of drag. But it's not immediately clear, seeing this, that what I'm doing is going into a Bob the Drag Queen look. And what we can do is we can, uh, we can take a, um, we can take a, eh, we can take a, selfie that I just did a moment ago and it's up that is a zero face of Stalgan 2 and it is uploading as far as I'm aware um, doing a thing um, so that is up not well all right the demo gods are not w with me. Um, let's get it. Uh, um, there we are. Um, so, so I've got a selfie. I've got the dimension from Br Br Brian Fergus to Trixie Mattel, that is the same human being in a lot of makeup. And I'm encoding right now. You can see it kind of progressing slowly. This is me going out of drag. This is me go going into drag. Um, it's not exactly um, like prime time quality, but you can also see that there are, um, that it gets kind of glitch art if you go too far, if I go 110% there, you've got <laughs> Chernobyl skincare routine, um, and you've got 
uh, kind of turning into plasma. So <laughs> don't, don't turn into plasma if you can avoid it. It's not very uh, sanitary. <laughs> <laughs> So, so th there, there are a lot of y uses for this as, as kind of fun glitch art, like ways to, to do a makeover. Um, it's also worth thinking about kind of larger scale impact though, because this is all fun and kick games, but it takes a while to curate a data set to provision GPU machines, and the GPU machines are super expensive, to tweak all the parameters, um, and, and this is not just for computer vision. We've invented 180 voices in Google Cloud text-to-speech, and they're either male or female. And the California state ID is more gender diverse. How often does that happen compared to like voices cooked out of thin air? So rather than doing like homophobia whack-a-mole, why not analyze the field as a system? And Dan Danella Meadows in 97 published 12 leverage points of kind of places to intervene in a s his system with, with varying amounts of l leverage. Uh, so the first one, you just kind of tweak the, the hyperparameters. You like encode it for twice as long. You, you change your, your models and this and that. And that's, and that's effective, but not as effective as tweaking the buffer sizes. So build new facial models, uh, build new notebooks with more inclusive training data, which is effective, but not as effective as varying the structure of material stocks and flows, like uh, using diverse data sets or having diverse hiring practices, which is effective, but not as effective as the delay per rate of change. So, run a continua continuous integration pe benchmark to assess kind of how, how inclusive your enco encoders are, which is effective, but not as effective as like slowing negative feedback loops, which is and slowing positive feedback loops. So file PRs to make, to make your AI more inclusive, but, uh, and, and fix bugs and add features in inclusive projects, not to the exclu exclusion of other projects, but to, which is effective, but not as effective as Structuring information flow, so raising awareness of systems, of, of issues of inclusion, which is effective and not as effective as changing the rules of the system. So like amplifying of voices, raising awareness, or putting on some adversarial f fashion to insert junk snippets from the f Fourth Amendment into license plate scanners, <laughs> driving around. So step five and step four. Four, uh, six and five are what we're doing right now. Four, kind of s organized system structure. So make a culture of open data, data, have reproducible results and be aware of, of, of how things go Th and change the goal of the system. Like maybe AI should be more inclusive and ethical, which is effective, not as effective as break down the mindset and paradigms of this si system and challenge anomalies and failures of assumptions, like where does the training data come from? Um, sh like are human benchmarks the best bench benchmarks? GNU freedom is zero. Should you, use, should you have the freedom to run the program for any purpose on a drone with a gun? How about sensitive groups? How are sensitive groups impacted? And after you've got that, that there's, there's a lot of power to transcend paradigms. So like if you teach people to code, if you drop the price of GPUs massively with like Google Colab and whatnot, then there are ways of decentralizing advancement of queer liberation. So, so thank you. Um, and <laughs> let me know what you th th think. It's been super exciting. Th thank you.